Welcome everyone. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, and thank you very much for uh, joining us today. As you see, we are back with a new episode on this uh, Euro Practice webinar series on the multi project wafer services uh, uh, dedicated to IMEC technologies. And uh, today we have a very special talk that uh, we would like to share with you. But uh, before we go into that, please uh, allow me to spend a few minutes uh, reminding you some practicalities for the session of today. So uh, as I was mentioning, in a few minutes, uh, we will uh, start with our talk. Uh, our speaker is ready and he will talk us about uh, the IMEX Silicon Photonics Multi-Project Wafer Service. This will last for about uh, 40 minutes and then we will have a Q&A session after that. For now, uh, as you may have noticed, your microphone, camera and chat uh, are disabled, but after the presentation, I will open up the floor for questions and you will be able to interact with our speaker directly. So hopefully we will have a very fruitful and lively discussion as in the past times. And now uh, that's all I had to say on this part. So uh, allow me please to introduce myself. My name is Maria Martinez Valado. I lead a team at IMEC responsible for the multi-project wafer services on IMEC technologies. And as you might have guessed, I, uh, I will be your host for today's webinar as well as for the rest of the webinars of this series. And as you can see, this series consists of uh, three episodes. A couple of weeks ago, we had a very nice uh, introduction and overview on Biopix, the IMEX uh, silicon nitride photonics platform. Just here uh, to remind you if you missed it or if you want to watch it again, please uh, go to the Europractice YouTube channel because in there you will find the recording of this episode and also all the webinars that Europractice has organized uh, previously. Then today uh, we will have a very special talk, as I was saying, from Dr. Mulham Holder on the multi-project wafer service uh, from IMEC uh, of uh, Silicon Photonics Technologies. And finally, in two weeks, Dr. Mimala Chatterjee and Maritza Tangarif your teeth will give us an overview of gallium nitride on SOI technology for highly integrated canises. So uh, with that, please uh, <clears throat> allow me to introduce you to our speaker of today. His name, as I already said, is uh, Mulham Hoder, and he received his master's degree in photonics in 2012 from the University of Ghent and BUB. After that, he joined BUB as a PhD and his program was focused on integrated semiconductor lasers using indium phosphide platforms. He graduated in 2016 and then he became a postdoctoral researcher always at VUV and he was working on designing and characterization of photonic integrated circuits to perform different kinds of research, just to name a few, laser uh, dynamics or nonlinearity of 2D materials using uh, dyes fabricated in different platforms like uh, silicon, silicon nitride or indium phosphate. Currently, Mulham works as an R&D project leader at IMEC in the team of the Silicon Photonics Multi-Project Wafer Service. So with that, I would like to invite uh, Mulham to the floor and I wish you all a very nice webinar. So Mulham, thank you very much for joining us today. Hello, Maria. Thanks for the nice introduction and I would like to welcome everyone to this webinar. So it is about uh, silicon photonics MBW surface and the outline of this uh, webinar will, will be as following. We will have introduction after that. I will introduce IMEC platforms. Then I will explain the available options for packaging and I will conclude by showing you how you can access IMEC technology. So let's start with introduction and it will be about photonics integrated circuits and silicon photonics. I will start from very simple uh, topic or issue. If you have a ray of light and this ray of light is passing from a medium with high refractive index to a medium with low refractive index in the surface between the two mediums or in the interface, you have several scenarios. Either the light will be transmitted completely or, it, or part of this light will be uh, transmitted and the second part will be reflected and we have interesting situation when 
the light will be completely reflected and this is what we call total internal reflection and that will happen when the angle of incidence is bigger what than what is called a uh, critical angle this is this is total this is what we call total internal reflection uh, total inter uh, internal re re reflection is the principle which we are using for fiber optics so in fiber optics you, you have a core with high refractive index and it's surrounded with a cladding with low refractive index and the light is guided via a series of total internal reflection the same concept is used in waveguides again we have uh, we have uh, we have core with high refractive index and around it cladding with uh, low refractive index so if they are if the waveguides and the optical fibers they are using the same concept what is the difference between them as you can see here, I am showing in this picture uh, the waveguide and the optical fiber. The width of the waveguide, for example, in silicon photonics can be around 0 0.5 micron, while if you go to and check the diameter of the optical fiber, it is around 10, uh, 10 micron. So it is about 20 times difference. Beside this, optical fibers are used to uh, transfer or to, to, or to carry data for long distance. But for waveguides, it is uh, it is used to guide light or to connect between different uh, optical components on what is called photonics integrated circuits. So now we have photonics integrated circuits. What is that? Photonics integrated circuits. It, it is the art of integration of several several optical functions on compact chip. Optical functions. What 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 we mean by this? It is either light emission, light guidance, wave, wavelength filtering, modulation, photo detection, or coupling. If you look to this chip, we can see we have lasers, and lasers, uh, lasers function is to emit light. We have, we have also waveguides to guide the light. We have detectors, we have modulators, we have also coupleurs, we have filters. Okay, this is the photonics integrated circuits. Why we need photonics integrated circuits? It is about scaling, so we want to move from bulky photonics to integrated photonics. So if you have system and if you build system in a lab in on optical table using the uh, uh, optical mechanical uh, component like mirrors and uh, fiber optics and uh, other components, you will have system like this. But if you want your system to be more complex and if you want to add a lot of structure in your system, you can end up with this and that is really too much. What we want to achieve with photonics integrated circuits, we want to put a complex system or uh, a lot of devices in small uh, chip. Here I am showing the cover of my BHT thesis. You can see that we have here chip and in this chip we have around 20 devices, including lasers, mirrors, waveguides, and modulators. And I glue it on top of cover mount, and I am putting it here on top of uh, uh, paper of uh, scientific paper. And you can see this this chip is smaller than one word. Really, that is really impressive. Good. What is the advantages? So we spoke about it about the photonics integrated circuits, but what is the advantage of that? As I said, we want to have a small size instead of large systems. We would like to increase the complexity. So in the photonics integrated circuits, you have building blocks of uh, micron scale and the size of the chip can be millimeter or centimeter if you want. And this allow you to put really a lot of component there. Good, more than more than this. BICs have uh, less power consumption. Yeah, that is very good taking into account now the increase in the power prices. Also, they have a smaller ecological footprint and that's also good for nature. And they have less cost, which is good for our pockets. If we look to the types of photonics integrated circuits based on their material, we have here, I am using also a uh, periodic, periodic table. You can, we have indium phosphate, so here indium in, and here phosphate. We have also gallium arsenide, gallium and arsenide. And you can notice that both of them, they are in three, five columns. And this is what we called the three, five peaks. Besides that, we have silicon nitride. Adil last week, uh, I think two weeks ago, explained to you about silicon nitride. And we have silicon photonics. 
uh, our start for today. So we are going to speak about silicon photonics, but why we are going to speak about that? Actually, silicon photonics has a broad range of applications, and the main applications for silicon photonics is data com and telecom. Uh, the explosive uh, increase of the internet traffic and that is th this increase in the traffic before the pandemic and, and now especially after the pandemic, after the COVID, where everyone is working from home, is leading data cent centers to use uh, silicon photonics. Why? Because it's high speed and because it, of low power consumption. So I mentioned data cen centers. What is this data centers? It is centers where your data is received transmit it, process it, wrote it, maybe save it or compute it. And in these data centers, we have what is called, or we need a lot of what is called uh, uh, silicon uh, uh, transceiver. And in this transceiver, you can see where is the silicon photonics playing uh, uh, an important role. So what is, what is this transceiver? It is combination of transmitter and receiver. The, rec the receiver, will receive the information which is coming from long distance via the fiber here and it will come to to and it will be converted to an electrical data and this data will be processed if you have electric if you have a data and this data it will be uh, if it is in electrical shape and you want to send it to a long distance you will convert it to uh, to an optical optical signal uh, or optical form and send it via fiber Another another application for silicon photonics is lidar, and here it should it should work. So the lidar is uh, 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 automotive lidar. It is giving the car um, idea about what is around it. And the third application is uh, biosensing or that or uh, lab on chip. So what we need to what we want to do here, we want to put a biological sample on the chip. We use laser and detector and we want to know if specific element or virus uh, is there. Uh, so it is something similar to the antigen kit you buying from the pharmacy, but that is different story, but it is the same concept. But we want to do something like this, but using uh, using BICS and silicon photonics. OK. Uh, if you look to the market forecast by applications between 2019 to 2025, you, you will note that the size of the market is moving from around $500 million to around $4 billion in 2025. And you can see that beside Datacom and Telecom, there are other applications. And you can see also that we have compound uh, annual growth rate of 40%, which is really impressive. OK. The question is, what is silicon photonics and what why it is attracting all this attention? For me, as I was working in silicon in indium phosphate, I was al always wondering why silicon photonics is because silicon silicon is uh, very good optical material. And I mean by optical material, is it good to fabricate waveguides? What I mean by that uh, if uh, is is, uh, is the waveguides uh, are the waveguides fabricated by by silicon are uh, with very low uh, propagation losses or maybe it is good candidate for uh, lasers or modulators or photo detectors actually none none of these reasons uh, uh, silicon is not the best candidate for all of these uh, all of these optical uh, functions so why what is the catch i will use this definition to explain you uh, the importance of silicon photonics. It is the implement. What is the what is silicon photonics? It is the implementation of high of high density photonics integrated circuits by means and this here the catch by means of um, CMOS process technology in a CMOS lab. So we are using CMOS technology in a CMOS lab. So we are depending on the available um, uh, available uh, infrastructure, which which costs around a few billion euros or dollars, and we are also uh, uh, piggyback on the accumulated uh, experience in CMOS and in microelectronics. And we, instead of starting from scratch, we are using this infrastructure and these fabs to build uh, our uh, photonics integrated circuits. Okay. What are the advantages of silicon photonics? So 
in silicon photonics the core uh, of the core of the waveguide is made of silicon which has a, a refractive index of 3.5 why the cladding is uh, from silicon oxide with refractive index around uh, 1.45 uh, so we have high index contrast which is around 200 percent and this high uh, index contrast allow you allow us to have very compact peaks so the waveguide can be uh, fabricated with 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 widths around 0.4 micron and we can have bands with very small rates and all of this allow us to increase the number of the structures on the same photo uh, brand which we want to achieve second advantage that we are using CMOS technology as I said we have nanometer precision we are using the existing fabs and expertise and uh, it allow us to have low cost when we have um, uh, 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 high, high volume production good moreover advantages of silicon photonics it allow us to high to, to have high preference uh, performance uh, basic devices such as waveguides and uh, filters also, it allows us to have high bitrate modulation, modulator and detectors, and it allows us also to have hybrid light source integration. What I mean by that, if you want to have lasers from silicon, uh, from indium phosphate chip, and you want to couple it to, uh, to silicon, you can, that is possible with the hybrid integration. Uh, and also, it allows us to have waferless automated testing so in this is very important to the foundries so instead you can do the testing on the wafer list without need to dice and to go to the uh, die uh, level good because of all of these advantages there are several uh, foundries or fabrication uh, facility around the world where you can get silicon photonics here i am showing uh, some examples of these foundries uh, where you can access to them uh, via MVW. So you can see that we have different uh, technology using different th thickness of uh, silicon on oscillator and for different applications. And as we are hosted today by your practice, it could be useful to show you which foundries can be accessed uh, directly via your practice and with this symbol. And as you can see, IMEC is one of these foundry, and as I am working for IMEC, I will take the opportunity to speak about IMEC platforms. Okay, uh, the overview of this of our platforms, I will start with what was offered before, and it was the passive platform. And as you can understand from passive, you have passive com uh, component, and this uh, this platform has been updated or upgraded by adding heaters and heaters offer you to have what is called thermal tuning. So the result of this upgrade is, is called Passive Plus, which combine, combine, uh, combines Passive component and thermal tuning. And if you want to add to that, having modulator, uh, if you want to add to that modulators and photo detector, so you add uh, the active component to the Passive Plus, you will have um, ASAP 50G. It is IMEX uh, Silicon Photonics Platform 50 gigahertz. Let's let's try to zoom in on this uh, uh, on these different platforms. But here, before starting, I would like to to highlight that uh, Basif uh, alone uh, is not um, offered anymore. It is just we 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 offer via MBW Basif Plus and ASAP 50G. So if we start by speak to speak about Basif Plus. So IMEC offers three edge depths uh, uh, in the silicon oscillator, and this allow you to have uh, rib waveguides and strip waveguides. And have and with this passive component, you are able to achieve a lot of devices. And to give you an idea about these devices, what I am showing them here in this slide. So we have multi-mode uh, interferometers. We have max center interferometer, we have a grating spiral, we have ring resonator, we have waveguide crossing. And here uh, I would like to highlight that IMEC offers several building blocks for C band and for O band. And designers are free either to use our building blocks or to design their own building blocks. It is your freedom. Moreover, there are more 
uh, building blocks in our uh, library and you will see it when you get it more than what I am showing here. The second part of passive plus is the heater. So what is this heater? Yeah, as you can see here in, in blue, as you understand from heater, it is uh, give you heat uh, uh, and increase the temperature and by increasing the temperature, you will um, you will change the refractive index and this allow you to tune optical functionality or properties like wave uh, like wavelength and i would like to show to show that these uh, heaters these heaters can be on top of the waveguides but not on direct contact and if you have heater you need to bias it or to apply current for it so for that you will need an electrical access and this um, can be achieved using two uh, additional layers of metal. You have metal uh, metal layer one and metal layer two, and on uh, and you need also bone band where uh, bone band where your uh, rope will be uh, land to apply the current or the voltage. Uh, okay, heaters again. Heaters uh, are used for uh, in some of the building blocks offered by IMEC, but also you can choose to use the heaters in your own building block. Good, this was BASI Plus. If we move to the, the state of the art uh, technology, which is ACP 50G. Uh, to start with that, I have to say that everything I spoke about it in BASI Plus is already included in ACP uh, uh, 50G. So you have the heater and the passive component, but in addition to all of that, you have uh, you have, as you can see here, doped silicon. So we are offering eight uh, implements level four for N type and four for B type, and uh, and this allow you to have different modulators. Beside the doped silicon, you have also uh, germanium module, and that allow you to have photo detectors. And again. Uh, if you have modulators and you have uh, photo detector, you need to apply uh, bias on them. And this, for this, you need electrical, ac uh, electrical access, as we show for heaters. So you have met metal two, uh, two level metal interconnect, and you have the aluminium uh, finish. Good. If we look to the uh, building blocks of uh, this uh, this platform. You can, I am showing here some of them, but not all of them. We have uh, Maxender modulator, we have ring modulator, we have photo detectors, we have filters, and we have also uh, grating coupler and edge coupler. Okay, let's speak about some of them. Uh, I will start with the modulator. For well, I will start with maybe some people they don't know what the modulator or it is good to, to, to explain what the modulator. If you have a continuous uh, light from laser and you have electrical signal and you want to print this electrical signal on on the light of the laser and so you will get a modulated light and why you want to do that you want for example to send your data via fiber optics for a long distance you need modulator. This is uh, what is modulator and how we achieve uh, achieve modulator in silicon photonics. So what we do, we build BN junction around the waveguide and then we apply uh, bias and by applying this bias, we are changing the uh, the holes and uh, electronics uh, density. This will cause uh, refractive index change and and this change in the refractive index will introduce uh, phase modulation and if you are in photonics and you want to move from phase modulation to intensity modulation you need to use interferometers so uh, either you can use maxender interferometer or ring and here i am showing two uh, two pictures for modulators from our for from acip 50g you have here the maxender and it is uh, how to say it? it's a little bit large uh, component because it is around one millimeter. Here we have the ring modulator. Uh, it is more compact; it's about 20 micron. They are use they are using uh, they are fabricated using using different doping uh, levels. And again, I would like to highlight that there are several uh, options for modulators for C band and for O band. 
and you are free to use them directly if you don't want to design from scratch or if you want to design your own building block, you are free to do that. Good. The second example about I would like to speak about it. It's the photo detector. So in the modulator, the output of the modulator is modulated light. Let's say that we want to return back from modulated modulated light to a critical signal, and this can be done via uh, photo, photo detector. So uh, to, fab to fabricate uh, uh, to fabricate photo detectors in silicon photonics, you, you, you we will face the fact that silicon is transparent, so uh, it will not absorb light. So we need to find a material which absorb light very good and which we can grow it on top of silicon. So this material is germanium, and as you can see in the cross section, we have the silicon waveguide and the doping around it, and we grow on top of it. Ger germanium and it is a little bit more complicated than this. Uh, how it looks like in real life uh, here a uh, microscopic picture of the uh, germanium photo detectors from IMEC and here I have to highlight something important. So uh, the uh, the building blocks I spoke about it before for BASIP and for uh, for ASIP 50G they were you are able to use either the building blocks from IMEC or you can design your own. For photo detectors, you can only use the building blocks from IMEC. You cannot design your own photo detector. So please be aware of that. Uh, yes, besides that, so I spoke about a lot of uh, building blocks and these building blocks, blocks are within the chip, but how we couple light from and to the chip? And this is uh, uh, and this is for both Basic Plus platform and for ASIP 50 platform. This is done via either edge coupler or any plane. So the coupler is in the plane of the uh, chip and it is wave tolerant and the test will be here. You, you need to have the die or the chip. You cannot do it on the wafer scale and in real life it looks like this, but here we are using lens fiber and you can see here the waveguide. Or you can have what is called grating coupler and it is off plane and so it is vertical and it is wavelength depending and it is also uh, allowing you to do the test on the wafer list, which is very important for a lot of foundries. Uh, IMEC allow you to uh, or offer you a lot of options for uh, couplers and this is for C band and O band and for the grating coupler is with or without uh, poly layer, which increase the efficiency of the coupling. And you can use these building blocks or you can design according to your needs. Good. What, what is offered by IMEC or by uh, ASIP 50G, we show that we can show, we can offer waveguides, filters, modulators, detectors, and couplers. What we are missing is light source on the, on the chip. And for this reason, IMEC is working with several partners to develop and to accelerate the hybrid integration of indium phosphate uh, lasers for silicon photonics chip. Yeah. Uh, next, I would like to speak about one example fabricated by ESEP 50G. And in this example, it is about designing of high speed multi lane silicon photonics magzender. So, the aim here is to increase the bandwidth density in the transceiver. So, they want to, uh, to include more and more magzender uh, uh, modulators on the transceiver by reducing the footprint of the magzender. And how they are doing it here, they, uh, they, uh, they design a new electrode structure and they shared the uh, ground bad between two neighbor uh, magzender to make it uh, more compact. And the concept, as you can see here, was demonstrated via two array of, uh, of uh, magzender here with two different uh, lengths, here one and here second one. By this slide, I want to move to, to the third section of uh, my webinar, which, which will be about the back packaging option. So, uh, I guess uh, there are several people know what is multi-project wafer. So uh, for do, for these who doesn't know what is that, so we uh, the concept is that we are collecting several designs from different from different projects and we combine them together and we fabricate them on 
uh, one wafer. And why we are doing this? Because we want to reduce the cost. So the, co the total cost will be divided between the different designs. And it is also options for some companies or startup or university to test the technology before going to the bigger projects for in the bilateral run. And here, how to say it? It is uh, something, uh, or to make it simpler, it is like uh, let's say let's say we have few people and they want to test uh, pizza but they don't want to invest a lot of money in buying <laughs> pizza so they share uh, they share uh, the cost together okay and dies so after we fabricate the uh, the wafer for the multi uh, multi project wafer we need to 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 cut this uh, wafer and to extract the dice for each customer. So in the case of the pizza, every every customer will uh, every every participant in buying this pizza will will take his piece. So some customers will uh, want to receive uh, their dice naked and it just looks look like this or like this and one reason to do that, maybe they would like to have a uh, booster process, so maybe they want to add something or to remove something from the top of the chip, or maybe they have very suitable setups to do the testing. Uh, we have other category of uh, customers, they prefer to work with the package uh, dice, so, which make their life easier, so something like this. Uh, the packaging, the photonics packaging surface uh, for our MBW is provided by our uh, your practice uh, partner Tendel, and here I am showing some examples. So if you are if we are talking about the fiber uh, only coupling, we have we have two options: either with two single fibers or on the two sides, or with two arrays of fibers. But if we are talking about fully uh, fully packaged module. We have also two situations. What I mean by fully packaged modules, it is not just the fiber, but it's also the electrical con uh, contacts. So we have also two options, one with two single uh, fibers, one in each side, or with two arrays of fibers. I will not uh, spend a lot of time about speaking about uh, packaging because if you are interested in that, I will invite you to check uh, the webinar about packaging, which uh, which are uh, available via the YouTube channel of your practice. Yes, uh, by this, I would like to move to my last part of this webinar, which will be about accessing iMac technology and I will start by showing our schedule for this year, 2022. So one month from now, today we are 9 of February. In 9 of March, we have our first run for this year, and it will be ASIP 50G. And we have another run uh, in this year and for ASIP 50G, and it will be in 24 of August. In this year, we have one BASIF plus uh, run in June, the 1st of June, and we will have another one in the beginning of uh, in January 2023. OK, so I hope uh, I convinced you about uh, or you are enthusiastic to 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 join to to one of these run. And if you are in this situation, I would like to show you how you access our technology. The first step is by signing the, the NDA or the, the uh, uh, design kit license agreement. So it is document uh, in the normal NDA. And the next step we will provide you after signing the DKLA with a username and password for a download platform where you can download, download, and here it's important, free of charge. So you don't need to pay or you don't need to confirm that you are joining. It's free of charge. You will be able to access to our handbooks. To our, in the handbooks, you will find a lot of explanation about the technology, about the design rules, which you needed for the DRC, and, for, and a lot of uh, information about the different uh, building blocks which we are offering. Also, we are offering the building blocks which you which you can use it in your design, and we we, we also this we will provide you with the BDKs and the files for some Ada uh, Ada softwares like uh, Lucida, Synopsis, Mentor, and others. And starting from March or starting from the coming run in March, we will start to provide our customers with uh, four page. Uh, 
document or guide or manual, it will help you and guide you in all the administrative steps and also it will give you uh, an information about the about the timeline of our DRC process and there is also like a technical checklist where you can check your design before before uh, before sending our uh, before sending your G, your GDS. The third step is to register your design and after finishing the design you you need to send us your GDS. It is not so complicated, it's super easy and we will be more than happy to help you in every step. Uh, my last uh, my last uh, slide in this uh, webinar will be about comparing between the different big technologies about the performance of this. So I am comparing silicon photonics with silicon nitride with three five uh, peaks. If we look to the CMOS compatibility, we can see that three uh, five are uh, is not compatible. If we look the best performance for passive component we can find it in silicon nitride if you want direct lasers in your platform you can have it in three five uh, bigs if you want it for silicon and silicon nitride you need, it is hybrid technology or hybrid integration if you want modulators and detectors they are both good and very good in in silicon photonics and in three uh, in three five for uh, for uh, silicon nitride, it is a little bit modest, or for detectors, you need hybrid integration. Uh, for more information about our runs or about our uh, technologies, please send us your questions to EPSIFOT at IMEC.be. And then uh, Milani, Armand, uh, Matteo, and me, we will be more than happy to answer your question. And by this, I reach to the end of my uh, presentation and uh, I will be happy to answer your questions.